Yeah, great question. So she asked, are our dogs gonna be DQ'd for jumping on things? It's our favorite answer. It depends, right? So I will tell you that I thought for sure I was gonna get DQ'd at a trial. I was doing an exterior search uh, with my Malinois and there were three large barbecues, the ones that you have a little rack, you roll them up. And my dog caught odor, jumped into the barbecue. I'm like, no, no, get down. He hit the ground, jumped into the next one. I could not keep him out of the barbecues to save my life. Like I was trying my darndest. He was trying to get to source fastest. We needed to go around the barbecues. I thought, that's it, I'm done, I'm DQ'd. And the judge even said, as I was coming around the last one, she said under her breath, he doesn't need to be in there. And I'm like, oh, I'm in so much trouble. Flipped around, went, he found it. I called alert, they said, thank you. They don't tell you if they just call you. So I kept searching throughout the day, thought for sure that we had DQ'd, second place of the day. So super shocked when they called my name. Took my ribbon, read my notes, and she wrote, um, what did she write? She said, I have a feeling you do this for real, which I thought was really funny. I had a Malinois, so she just assumed he was some kind of retired police dog. And she just said, nice dedication to Odor, good job trying to keep him out of the barbecues. So she knew what the dog was trying to do. She could see my attempts to get him out of there. He was just too fast. And you can't correct your dog while you're searching. So I couldn't tell him no or give him a heel command. Uh, you can't yank on your leash. So I only have so many tools to try to keep him out of there. So to me, that was proper judging. Like she could read the situation and go, okay. Now, had I just let him search the barbecues and walked through with him, I very likely would have been disqualified. So if the judges see that you're trying to keep your dogs off of stuff, and that it is productive, the dog is trying to get to odor, they're less likely to DQ you. But if you're just letting your dog jump up and walk around on tables and there's really no need for it, they're definitely gonna excuse you from the search area. So there's like a regular DQ where you do some, where your dog you know, scratches something and maybe you didn't even notice, and one little paw on something will get you a DQ, and then there's this isn't safe, your dog's not under control, and they'll actually excuse you from the search and won't let you keep searching for the day. Yeah, so at the regular levels, at what I would call the uh, club trial levels or the more user-friendly levels, it's gonna depend on your organization, but they're gonna be under four or five feet. Once you get to the really advanced levels, the elite trials and some of the other things they're having, it, all bets are off. They want it to replicate real life searches. And so, like I said, they can be 12, 15 feet up. And we'll talk about teaching elevation and how we teach our dogs to alert when it's up high without disturbing the search area and all that good stuff. So yeah, jumping on stuff. I have a couple clients with very boisterous dogs that also do agility. And so you go in and see a bunch of little, pre again, preschools, right? You go and see a bunch of little desks or cot areas and they're like, oh man, are my dogs gonna jump on those? But all stuff we prep them for before trial.